listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hello and welcome to Six Figure Dog Business. I'm your host, Ty Brown of SixFigureDogBusiness.com. Now, this is the show where we teach you how to start or grow your pet-related business to a healthy six-figure per year profit. Now, I'm excited because on the show today, we've got a web guru with us named Nick Crone, and this is going to be an interesting show because this is the first person I've ever teamed up with and partnered with. And so stay around. You're going to come back and hear some amazing strategies for how to turn traffic onto your website as if you're turning on a faucet. We'll be right back. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Petco. Where the pets go. Petco. Where the pets go. Pet Life Radio has tail wagging, fur flying, fabulous deals for our listeners from Petco. Get $6 off your order of $60 or more and up to 40% off the entire Petco site. That's right. But that's not all. Because you're a Pet Life Radio listener, you'll also get free shipping on your order of $49 or more. $6 off, up to 40% off, and free shipping from Pet Life Radio and Petco. To get these awesome deals, go to PetcoDeals.com. That's PetcoDeals.com. Petco, where the pets go. Welcome to GoDaddy.com's internet cloud. First, get your domain name from GoDaddy.com. Then, make your business and personal internet dreams come true. Go to GoDaddy.com. Use promo code SFDB101. Get a .com domain name for just $7.49. SFDB102 for 10% off your order. SFDB103 for $5 off $30 or more on any items. Or SFDB104 for 20% off one-year hosting plan. GoDaddy.com. Domains, websites, and everything in between. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Okay, we're back. And as I teased in the beginning, uh, we're talking with Nick Crone today. So first off, welcome to the show, Nick. Glad to have you. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. And so I teased in the beginning by saying that you're the first person I've actually partnered with in my business. And so I want to give a little bit of your background, but like I say, Nick and I are actually partnering up because one of the weaknesses I had in my business was I've been able to help my clients really, you know, optimize their business, get their businesses in good shape. And I'm actually good at getting traffic and, uh, and getting, uh, you know, a good amount of traffic to websites, but I'm not an expert at it. And so Nick is kind of a guru at getting traffic to websites. And so we're partnering up to help better serve our clients. And so Nick, why don't you start out by telling us what's a little bit of your background, what's your experience in the online world and, and what you do? Sure, absolutely. So, you know, my, my story is actually a little bit funny. When I got started, I actually, it's really funny, actually, it, everything happens to me by accident, it seems. And when I first got started, I was in this dead end job and I was working in the call center and I absolutely loathed working there. And it was a, <laughs> it was a nightmare. And my start actually started out in, in uh, the social media space, namely Facebook and Facebook marketing and whatnot. And so I actually went to one of my superiors, the marketing director of the company I was working for and said, hey, I have some great ideas. I'd love to do this awesome webinar. And they looked at me and they're like, well, I'll give you a shot. There's nothing to lose. They paid for the software. It wasn't very much money. And, you know, I started, I built my very first Facebook page. And this was, this was maybe three and a half, four years ago. And I actually went and I started building at the time. They called it fans. Now they have likes on the Facebook page. I was building these fans on the Facebook page. And I started building the fans. We got over to 10,000 fans and I started pushing this webinar really hard. And I got about 300, 350 people to register for this webinar. Well, when the night of the webinar came, we actually had 213 people attend the live event. 
and the company made like 60 grand. Wow. So yeah, it was it was absolutely ridiculous. You know, this this experiment of sorts that had been going on turned into something extremely, you know, profitable. And they looked at me and they're like, well, how would you like a full-time solid position doing this full-time? And, you know, they were patting me on the back and making me feel good. But in all reality, I was scratching my head and I was like, man, if I can do it with this for a terrible, like the, it was a real estate company, which, you know, as you know, it's, it's extremely competitive and, you know, it's a hard industry to work in. And I could make it work in one of the most terrible industries. I can make it work even better in other industries, I, I thought. And so I kind of started this journey to go out on my own, doing my own thing. And, you know, from there, it actually just grew. And, you know, as you know, Ty, there's ups and downs on all businesses. Sure. And, and you, you learn what the most effective strategies and tactics are in, you know, this is the way I think. What are the things that you can do to spend the least amount of time on to get the most results? And that's kind of what I've been perfecting over the last several years. Leverage, so, right? That's right. You got it. So that's kind of my, my history. I got into the SEO space, the web development. You know, I'm a seasoned programmer and I do all that type of stuff. And, you know, launching programs and building traffic and making sales is what I do. And it's a fun business to be in. So that's what I want to do is I want to get inside your brain and help our listeners today get inside there and get just some of the meatiest tips, you know, some of the meatiest things that people can start applying today and start to see more traffic, you know, as soon as possible. So let's talk a little Absolutely. bit about SEO. Um, why don't you define what SEO is and give us some good, you know, some uh, meat and potatoes here. Absolutely. So SEO stands for search engine optimization. The way I break it down is it's basically the thing – you getting on the first page of what you want your visitors to search for. So I go on the internet and I search for dog training in Utah, and I want to rank for that keyword. Um, We're number one for that, by the way. Just in case you weren't, <laughs> just in case you didn't know, my company's number one for that. So there yeah. you go. You're, you're doing what you do right, my friend. And that's what SEO is, and it's a combination of two things in my mind. And I like to keep it super high level because we don't need to get super technical for some people. I break it down to two things. What are you doing on your website to optimize your website? On-site optimization, okay? And then the second one is your off-site optimization. What are you doing on these external websites that you don't own to build links and you know optimize these other pages to bring people to yours? And this okay. is how Google looks at it, right? Google will say, okay, this person – is growing in popularity because there's all this communication and chatter going around in all these different places about this one place. Let's rank it higher for what they're talking about. And that's basically what Google's looking at. And, um, and that's the offsite optimization, right? That, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of, you know, and it's a two part thing. You know, today we'll talk about a little bit of both of those. And so, so tell me about site optimization. When you say, what we can do on our websites, what are some things that, you know, that anyone can do on their website to make it more Google friendly, make Google happy? Absolutely. So again, what are the minor changes you can do to make the most great result? And let's talk about a couple different things that you can do on your website. Okay. Anyone can go on anyone else's website and look at the source code of the website. And so usually when I sit down with a person for the first time, I can tell exactly what they're doing wrong on their website. Believe it or not, 98% of anyone that I talk to about SEO needs some form of help on their on-site optimization. So here's some meat and potatoes for you. And feel free to write these three things down if you're listening to this right now. One of the easiest things to change is your title of your website. I know it may be a simple thing, but people don't think about it too often. So you don't want your, your title of your website to be homepage, okay? You don't mm -hmm. want it to be anything besides the name of your business, you know, because usually you want to rank for the name of your business and or include your keyword in the title as well. So a dog training in Utah, you know, I would put that in the title of the website as well. And the way you can tell what your title is is, you know, I'm on Firefox right now as we're talking, and if I pull up a website and I hover over the tab, it says how to outsource your business to the Philippines is one website I have open right now. You know, mm -hmm. a Gmail, it says inbox, and then it has my email address. So that's the title of the website. 
The second thing for your on-site optimization, we have the, the description of your website and the keywords of your website. And if you're on WordPress, this is the easiest thing you can work and change. Even if you have a, a basic HTML website, most websites will allow you to change these three things. And so making sure your keywords are obviously in your keyword section. And then the description, if someone were to search for you on Google, the description of your website will come up under the link, right? And the title of your website. So, right. so on the page, when you search for, you know, dog groomers in Atlanta, you know, there's going to be that link and then underneath it, the text, that's the description. You got it. And, and it could say, you know, we're specialized in dog training and we're in boom, boom, and just talks about it, right? You want to include your keywords in the description as well. Again, you need to make it readable, but you need to try to include as many keywords as you can in all of those sections. And here's my number one tip for your SEO. If you're not going to pay someone 500 to 1000 bucks a month, which can be expensive, choose one to two keywords for yourself and say, I want to dominate these. You'll know if you dominate them, if you're ranking for them. Right. So, yeah, okay. that's your on-site optimization. Work on those three things. And if you can do that, that's going to go miles. And it's going to, you know, once you start doing your off-site optimization, it's difficult to start ranking if your on-site is not optimized. Okay. And, you know, and I want to just pause right there for a second because I don't want to brush over this because it sounds so simple. You know, when you mention these things, change this, this, and this. I think oftentimes when people are looking, you know, to improve their business, they're looking for like this lightning moment where, you know, the finger of God touches them and they know that they have to change this monstrous thing. But what you're saying is make a couple little changes, put a couple keywords here, make sure your description is bulky and has a lot of information in it. And just that will probably do enough to put them ahead of a lot of their competitors, right? Absolutely. Because yeah. most people aren't doing it. You know, it's, it's a shame. Well, and I was going to say, you and I have now partnered up on our business, so you've been starting to look at more pet-related websites. That's right. Have, have you found that you know most of them are good at doing this, or you know, would this set somebody apart if they started doing this? It would make a huge difference because this, especially this industry, it's probably one of those things that people are five or so years behind on, you know. And so I don't see it a common thing that people have this done in the dog training industry. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, so we, you know, you gave some really great tips for on-site optimization. And if you're listening to this, I hope you're taking notes. Go out and do that stuff. What about off-site optimization? What are some good tips there? Okay. So one of the most simplest things, it's not a technical thing. It's very easy to do. And it's one of those things you need to do consistently long-term. Okay. We're talking about forum postings. Okay. Participating in a forum can seem a little bit dated, but here's the truth about it, okay? If I go on a website and let's say it's got a form attached to it and let's say it's extreme sports, and I'm only bringing this up as an example because I actually participate in an extreme sports forum because you know I have some websites in that niche. You wanna choose a forum that gets decent traffic so at least there's conversation going and mm -hmm. that's related to your niche. So maybe for you guys, find something in the dog training industry or the dog pet grooming, whatever, right? And you want to look for one thing specifically in the forum. Does it have a signature? Okay, so I make a post in a forum. Every single time I post, I want to make sure I have a signature that shows something of my own. And I can say, Nick Crone, social media ninja, visit my website. And you need mm -hmm. to make sure your keyword is there and it's hyperlinked to your website okay so dog training in utah right you mm -hmm. want to take that and you want to link it back to your website and if you were to do that every single time you post you have a new link and this is called link building and the reason we love forums is it takes me three to four minutes to do two to three posts in a forum i pull up you know and i did this you know about a half an hour ago i go up to one of my websites that I'm participating in and I pull up three to four topics that I want to leave a comment on and I'll just quickly leave a comment and my signature automatically goes in there. And here's the benefit. You do it for one year straight, you will dominate all the keywords that you have in your signature. There's no doubt in my mind. Let me get a little bit deeper there just to kind of help those who may have never done this. Somebody that's saying, okay, if I participate on a forum, maybe they have a dog walking business in Denver and they, you know, okay, I'm going to participate on this forum. Well, you know, the people on the forum, they're in Cleveland, they're in New York, they're in Miami. What do they care about a dog walker in Denver? So, you know, what do you say to somebody like that? You know, I would suggest 
not all dog trainers, you know, even if it isn't a form and it's going to say Denver, you know, it's location based, it's not going to matter to them anyway. I mean, you are going to get some referral visitors from the forum, but in all reality, the people in Denver are going to search including Denver. You're not going to have someone in Georgia write Denver in there. Does that make sense? You're still going to get the benefit of doing it. So you're saying that the forum strategy is not that people read your forum post and come by your service. The forum you got it. is really just to get the link pointing at your website, right? You got it. Isn't that funny how that works? And here's another tip is you can have four, five, six different keywords for every forum post that you do in your signature. So I'm not telling you to spam away or put totally unrelated links in there. But if you have maybe two or three websites that you're working on, why not include the link in there? And it's going to be good linkage. It's going to help you out in your SEO value. And again, Google's going to see it in a different place. And if you really want to get fancy, participate in two or three forums. Do it for three months, six months, nine months at a time. And it's really going to be a huge boost in your SEO. I want to highlight something you just said because it's a mistake that I made probably about four or five years ago. You know, because I learned this uh, this concept years ago, and so I was like, okay, I'm going to be a good little forum poster. So what I did is I went and I created some accounts, and I did. You know, I, I'm ashamed to admit I started spamming them. You know, I would just I would enter stupid little comments just so that my link was pointing back to my website, mm -hmm. and in nearly every case, you know, the forum owners knew what I was doing, and so they banned me. And so yeah. it was a uh, you know, it was not a good strategy there. I think the main key here is is you've got to be provide. You know, you got to be a part of the conversation. You, you need to be a little bit savvy. You need to know what you're talking about a little bit. You know what I mean? Maybe you yeah. just posting questions. You can never go wrong. Exactly. Well, good. So, so we're going to take a break right now. But when we come back, I want to ask you about something that a lot of my clients want to know about. Do I do it? Do I not do it? How do I do it? We're going to talk a little bit about blog posting when we come back. So stay right with us. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. <laughs> Introducing the new Brett Michaels Pets Rock Collection exclusively at PetSmart. I created it for the pets that rock your world. Shop the Brett Michaels Pets Rock Collection and celebrate PetSmart's 25th anniversary with up to 25% off thousands of items on the PetSmart site. Plus, free shipping on orders of $49 or more. Go to PetSmartDeal.com. That's PetSmartDeal.com. P-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-D-E-A-L.com. I'm not much of a reader, but I do wish I were more well-read. There are so many great books coming out. I wish I could find a way to keep up. Audible.com makes it easy to stay well informed and catch up on your reading simply by listening. Audiobooks from Audible turn downtime into uptime. You'll be more productive and become well read. Now I'm able to catch up on all the great books I've been wanting to read. With Audible, I feel smarter. Pet Life Radio listeners, try Audible.com now and get your first 30 days of Audible Listener Gold Membership plan free. And get a free audiobook. Choose from over 100,000 titles. To get this great deal, go to audibledeals.com. That's audibledeals.com. Dyson. The new Dyson Animal Backs are powerful bagless upright vacuums for homes with pets. Air muscle and radio root cyclone technology generates the strongest suction power to powerfully remove dust, dirt, and pet hair from the home or car. To order your Dyson Animal Vac, go to DysonDeals.com. DysonDeals.com to order your Dyson Animal Vac today. Dyson. Music to your ears. Your groomer is going to hate me. Hi, I'm Allie McLennan. Join me for my Pet Life Radio show, Groom for Improvement. You're going to save time and money with these tips from my New York City grooming table. From product recommendations to do's and don'ts, I am going to hook you up. So just do me a favor and don't mention this to your groomer. Groom for Improvement on Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Pet 
Okay, so we're back, and uh, we're talking with Nick Crone, and uh, he's been telling us about on-site optimization, search engine optimization. We're talking about forum posting, and really the great thing of what you've mentioned so far, forum posting, a couple minutes a day. Changing the title and the description on your website takes a couple minutes right now. But just a couple little changes like that, like you mentioned, small little things can make big differences. That's just awesome. And so why don't you tell us, because I know one area where you're really, you know, where you excel is in blog posting. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So this is kind of one of those topics where people are like, man, I could spend 30 minutes doing something else of extreme value. Blogging is not always for, you know, giving company updates or, you know, sharing some controversial topic. There is actually an extremely effective marketing technique with blogging. And I'm going to say it's even more scarce than people doing SEO in general. What if I were to tell you, Ty, and I'm going to leave you on a little bit of a cliffhanger here towards the end. What if I were to tell you that every single time, if you were to write a blog post in a very specific way, every time you publish that blog post, it's going to show up on the first page of Google right when you publish it. Would that be beneficial to your business? Yeah, it would. I mean, if you can hit first page over and over, that's going to bump your traffic by a ton. And then if you were to do it 10 times and you were to show up, let's say it works nine times out of the 10 times you do it, and you show up on the first page of Google for nine different searches that people search for, is that also going to be a benefit? Yeah, yeah, of course. Let me share a quick 30-second story, okay? So I had a client about maybe 12 months ago, and I wrote a review on this project management tool, which was brand new at the time called Asana, asana asana.com, right? And I wrote a review on it and I published it on my blog and I wrote it in this very specific way. And one of my clients three days later searched for a review on this tool. And it just so happened he got on my blog, he read it. And towards the end, he was like, wait a second, this is Nick's blog. And he was just dumbfounded, like totally small world, You know, he's up in Salt Lake. I'm down here in Utah County. And he's like, oh my gosh, I was just reading on your blog and I searched you on Google. Like there's no, just total small world experience. And that's the power of what we're going to talk here. So let's talk about the building the perfect blog, SEO optimized blog post is what I call it. Okay. Um, It has about four or five different features and I'll give you a couple of them and I'll leave you on a little bit of a cliffhanger here. So the keyword that you're going to be writing about, okay? Let's say we'll keep going with this dog training in Utah, right? And I'm going to write a blog post titled dog training in Utah. So my keyword is going to be in my title of my blog post. Okay. That's step one. Step two is I break up. I always write this backwards. I write the headlines first, and I choose three headlines, okay? If you have a WordPress website, this is really easy. It's called a headline one, headline two, and a headline three. And, okay. you know, the way Google looks at it, the HTML is it's an H1 tag, an H2 tag, and an H3 tag, okay? That's a little bit technical, but you need to include the keyword in all of those tags. So this is how it looks so far. You have the title, you know, new report, dog training in Utah, you know, explodes. And then, and then you have three headlines, and we're going to fill in under the headlines that also have the keyword in them, two to three paragraphs, okay? And they can be very short paragraphs, like two sentences, or they can be a little bit more meatier, like four sentences. And I'd like to chunk them up a little bit because it's easy to read. So in the body is what I call those paragraphs. You need to have one link leading back to your website, you know, somewhere like a contact us page. So to the same website is what you're saying? Back to the same website. Okay, that makes sense. Just a different page on the same website, right? That's right. And that's just good SEO. And then you have three simple things. You underline the keyword in the body once. You italicize the keyword in the body once. And you bold the keyword in the body once. Okay, so let's break this down. Why do we do this? Why, do, why am I just changing the text a little bit? Well, if you were to look at the HTML which is the only thing Google reads, Google sees that there are some characters that say, this is special, we've bolded this, and we've underlined this, or we've italicized this. And so we're separating that keyword from the rest of the post. Does that make sense? Yeah, so So, just basically making it stand out when it looks at the code. That's right, so you have it in the titles, the headlines, and the body, 
and you have a link back to your website. I'll give you one last tip to make the perfect blog post, and that's including a picture and naming, again, Google doesn't see the picture, it sees the HTML, and there's what we call an alternative tag. It's called an alt tag, mm -hmm. and it basically says, what is this picture about? And you name it the keyword, okay? So I hope this is not too technical, but if you do all of these things and you click publish, Nine times out of 10, you will be on the first page of Google for that specific keyword. Now, if it's a medium or a high competition keyword, you know, if you've done some research, um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but I've never had a difficult time with the low competition keywords. And it's really powerful, powerful and, marketing too. And just to kind of highlight high competition versus low competition, dog training in Utah would be lower competition. Dog training just by itself would be very high competition. You correct? got it. Yeah. Okay. So just just as a review of what you said, because I was taking notes here as you, you were talking, the keyword goes in, in the title. It goes in the H1 tag, H2 tag, H3 tag. And so in those tags, what you're doing is those are just mini headlines within. So if dog training in Utah, you know, the first one would be like dog training in Utah, how to find the right trainer. The next you one, down, dog training in Utah, how to, you know, how to make sure you're getting your money or something like that, right? Bingo. You know, it's kind of an addicting thing because I'm a terrible writer and I go to my wife and I'm just like, can you please proofread this? I'm terrible at writing and I hated it in high school. And once I figured this one piece out, I did it three or four times a day because it was so addicting to see on my Google Analytics where it shows me how people are getting to my site that people are searching for this thing and they're coming to my site because of my blog posts. So if you want to be successful – in getting small amounts of traffic from each blog post. It's just a matter of creating more and more and more blog posts and you'll have lots of traffic. You just need to write them in a very specific way and you can get thousands a day to your website this way. You know, this one strategy is huge because, and I'm gonna test it out today and see if it works for me, because I've got a website, one of my websites isn't doing as well as it could be and so I'm gonna test it out. But yeah, for something like this, because I've always known find the right keywords, put them in your content. Uh -huh. I've never heard down to the details, okay, put it in the H1 tag, H2 tag, you know, make it the alt tag for your picture. I mean, but that's just super easy. I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot to do that. And, you know, if you don't know what you want to write about, if you were to Google this phrase, Google keyword tool, Google has a free tool that tells you what people are searching for and what the competition is. You can find out a topic and then you just start writing away and write it backwards, write your headlines and your titles and then fill in the blanks. And always have a picture. And, you know, Ty, I didn't want to share the number one secret because that's kind of some of the stuff that we're including in our dog training. And, you know, if you were to follow these steps, you, you will get good results. And so, like I said, that's huge. And I, uh, yeah, thank you for sharing that because I'm actually going to go give that a try. It's kind um, of fun. Yeah. Well, excellent. I want to finish up here. If you had one more little tip or, or anything else, what would that be for the people listening? You know, just creating content, whether it's guest blogging on someone else's site, if you write that same style of blog post and put it on someone else's site, it will just be as effective. And instead of including a link to their website, obviously you want to include a link back to your website. And that will, again, you want to highlight the keyword in the link and you'll get more value back to your website. Excellent. Well, folks, I appreciate you listening to this call today. Nick, I appreciate so much the information you've been giving today. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being on the show. And for those listening, like I say, I met Nick. He actually lives here about you know 45 minutes away from me here in the Utah area. I met him uh, a couple months ago and got into his information, was learning from him and learned so much that, like I say, we actually decided to team up. And so on our site now, sixfiguredogbusiness.com, what it's going to include is all of the step-by-step -step systematic processes that I've been using to help people grow their businesses for years, and my own businesses for that matter, now combined with a level of online training that I've never been able to provide because I just wasn't as good at it, you know, not nearly as good as Nick and uh, Nick and his partner. And so I want to encourage you, if you haven't been to sixfiguredogbusiness.com, this is my shameless plug for today. Head on over, check out what we're doing. We've got new stuff going on there. Almost every day we're adding new stuff. So, so please head on over and we look forward to talking with you. Thank you so much for listening to today's show. For questions or comments or show ideas, please email ty at petliferadio.com or visit sixfiguredogbusiness.com and we'll talk to you again soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand. 
only on PetLifeRadio.com.